Hi everyone, I'm Rincy. This is Rincy Reads. Today I'm back to do my November wrap-up part two. So if you didn't see a couple weeks ago, I did a November wrap-up part one because I had already finished about four books at that point in the month and I was like, oh, I should probably break this up into two parts before I end up doing an hour-long wrap-up. And so I did part one in case you missed it. I'll link it up in the cards. And I am back now with part two with the rest of the books that I read in November. Now my focus for November was doing nonfiction November stuff. So I only have two books to talk about in this wrap-up because I was really focusing on finishing these nonfiction books and non fiction takes me a little bit longer to read but honestly I'm okay with it because it meant I re still read six books overall for the month and since I don't have quite as many books to talk about in this wrap-up I thought I would also kind of give you a little preview as to what I have planned for December. So first up I have White Tears Brown Scars How White Feminism Betrays Women of Color by Ruby Hamad. This is a collection of essays and it is so good. As you can probably tell by the title, this is a book that talks about how uh, white feminism specifically, so basically the type of feminist agenda that prioritizes the needs of white people and ignores people of color, you know, causes harm to everyone else. This is honestly a really, really fantastic book. I think that this is really good to read if you are someone who has been doing the work of like trying to learn more about race and racism and maybe you yourself are white and you want to know more about the things that you might be doing either consciously or subconsciously. This is kind of like the next step. You know, there were sort of the books that everyone picked up last year and this one kind of like is adds another layer to it. Ruby Hamad herself is Arab Australian and so one of the things I really enjoyed about this book is that it talks about things from more of an international perspective. Like obviously the United States has talked about a decent amount in here, but she also talks about incidents that happen around the world, which I really appreciate. But this book really focuses on how white supremacy has basically been utilized against black and indigenous people and people of color all around the world. And she talks about it from a lot of different angles. Um, she herself considers herself brown, which is part of the reason why she uses the word brown in the title. She talks about that in her introduction. And one of the things that I also really enjoyed about this book is that it talks about things from a variety of sort of points of views. So she talks about specific incidences that affect black women. She talks about specific incidences that affect East Asian women and how it uh, different instances affect like Middle Eastern women and things like that. So there are like additional layers to this book that she talks about and she, you know, really starts to go a little bit more into the details of different situations. I will say that like some of the earlier essays felt a little bit like she was talking about situations that I was like already familiar with. And so in the beginning I was a little bit like, oh maybe I'm not gonna love this book. But then at the farther I got into the book, the more I started to enjoy it. Not so much that I didn't enjoy those first couple of essays, but it felt like things that I already either knew about or had read about or things along those lines. It took a couple of chapters or a couple of essays before I felt like it was delving into areas that I didn't already know um, or did, hadn't already read about in other books or articles or anything like that. So if you are someone who may have like maybe read the first chapter and felt like there wasn't going to be anything new in here, I would recommend that you continue reading on because I do think that because there are other chapters that focuses that focus on different ethnic groups as well as chapters that talk about incidents that take a place take place in places not the United States. I felt like this was a really really great read and I think that this book does a really great job of just highlighting all of these various incidences where white women use their power as being white to position themselves as close to the top as possible and therefore by doing so they end up hurting everyone else around them. So this was really fantastic. Highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, this is kind of like taking a next level course in sort of like race and racism and the complexities of the situations that we're dealing with. So really enjoyed this book. Really glad that I got a chance to read it. And then the second book I have to talk about today is Silver Sword and Stone at Three Crucibles in the Latin American Story by Marie Arana. This is a history book that kind of goes over these three major ideas in regards to Latin American history. So Silver has to deal with mining and the importance of mining in that area. The second is Sword and has to do with like the extreme violence that has historically just 
continuously been a part of Latin America. And then third is stone, which has to do with religion and sort of how religion has kind of been this major influence in Latin America. This is, like I said, a history book. And so it is a little bit more dense. And so this is probably the book that took me the majority of the second half of the month to read. But honestly, it was 100% worth it. I thought this was fantastic. Now I do have to say that like, I'm not of Latin American descent. Um, I don't know really anything about Latin America. Like I have like a very, very, very bare bones knowledge of the history of various countries in that area. And so I can't, you know, speak with authority on this book. But from what I've read, this does a really good job of giving you kind of like this high level overview of various points in different countries and the impacts that that has had, like the lasting impacts that that has had on both the people who live there, as well as like the economies and the way other countries treat them and things like that. The way this book is written, honestly, is so, I mean, I hate using the word readable, but I think something that people who don't typically read a lot of nonfiction and specifically historic history stuff, they might be like turned off because they think it's going to be really dry. But I think Marie Arana does a really fantastic job of like bringing these stories to life. I will say it is a little bit overwhelming reading all of this stuff, which again is why it took me longer to read this book than, you know, maybe I typically spend on books. It's worth it. I think that it all comes together really well. And no, I'm not going to be able to take a test and remember all of the names and dates that are mentioned in here. But I do have a better understanding for some of the major things that have happened in Latin America and how that's impacting Latin America today. I think that the stone section, so like the first third of the book, was the hardest for me to get into just because like it's probably the part that took place the most in the past. Uh, so like the majority of the things that they're talking about take place in like the, you know, 13, 14, 1500s. And obviously it had impacts in future years and things like that. But a lot of like the big events she talks about are sort of these older events, whereas the violence and religion parts, while yes, are older, also have more ramifications in this day and age. And so I found those sections to be a lot more interesting and easy for me to relate to. I think that if you're someone who, like me, has like a very tertiary or maybe not even any knowledge about Latin American history, this book doesn't expect you to know anything. And she does a really great job of explaining sort of a lot of these major events and sort of giving you some context so you can understand what's happening here. And as the book continues, you continue to sort of like build on these things that you know. And she also does a great job of sort of like explaining how various events were happening in different countries and impacting different indigenous people and sort of the way all of these different like kings and queens from Spain impacted and Portugal uh, impacted Latin America and all this stuff and yeah this is just really well done. The two sort of like downfalls I suppose you could say for this book are just that it's really dense like there's a lot of information in here so I could see that being a turnoff for people. Um, the other is that it's like just really sad like there are just so many horrific things that have been done and continue to be done in Latin America. Not even just like the people unto themselves like causing whatever, uh, but like literally like the way that other countries treat Latin American countries is terrible and continues to be terrible. And part of the reason why it seems like they're stuck in this horrific cycle. So there was like a part of me that like finished, especially the violence and religion sections and, you know, the religion section is the last one. So there's sort of like a wrap up almost at the end of it. And it made me really sad because I was a little bit like, how do things even get better? Because it feels like things are so terrible. But also you could say that about everything that's happening in the world right now. And we get, we continue to try to move forward and make things better. So yeah, I, I really appreciated this book a lot. I feel like Marie Arana did about as great of a job as you can do to take uh, idea as like wide in scope as this and make it as comprehensive but still readable and approachable as possible for anyone. So yeah, I really enjoyed this a lot uh, and I definitely want to go check out the biography that she's written on Bolivar after reading this and I also now want to just read everything that she writes. <laughs> so yeah, those were the last two books that I finished in the month of November. So again, I'm really happy with the way Nonfiction November went. And now that we are in December, I have like some mini goals in mind and like some updates and things like that. If you watched my 
final goals video that I posted, I think in October, maybe, I don't know. I'll link it up below. Um, I said that my goal for the last quarter, besides participating in nonfiction November, was to reduce my physical TBR and get all of the older books that are on my physical TBR, basically either read or unhauled. And so that is my goal for December. And I feel like I'm in a really good place, honestly. So you can check out that original video if you want to see the full list. But basically, I now just have like two comics, technically two books, but one of which I'm about to talk about because I'm not going to read it. And then Anna Karenina and an Anna Karenina retelling. I feel like I might actually end up reading Anna Karenina this month. Is that too ambitious? Possibly. But I have some other updates before we get to that. So first I tried reading Mad Bandit and Dangerous to Know by Samira Ahmed. I read the first like 40 to 50 pages of this and it's just not for me. You are following this character named Kayem who is around 17 years old and she like applies to get into like this art school because she wants to be an art historian and her essay is about how there is like this French painter who she thinks gave one of his paintings to Alexander Dumas and she had like was doing all this research or whatever and the people were just like no you have this completely wrong you didn't do a good job with your research and rejected her from the school because of it and so she's in Paris now sulking because she's half American half French she's also Indian and Muslim and so she's like in France with her family for the month and she in the first page she like runs into this guy named Alexander Dumas who happens to be like you know the great great grandson or whatever of the Alexander Dumas and so now she's like researching whether or not this French painter whose name I can't remember actually did gift him a thing and I was just like I just I just don't want to I just don't want to do this right now <laughs> like it's just like too many coincidences and too much like teen angst you know I enjoy my YA every now and then but like this is just not working for me so I'm just like it's okay I'm fine just like letting this one go I will try another Samira Ahmed book because I just feel like this premise is not for me and some of her other ones feel like more up my alley so yeah I'm gonna let this one go and so the other like book that I have to read is In Want and Plenty by Meredith McDaniel. This is kind of like a devotional type of book and so this is one where I read the prologue and I'm enjoying it uh, but it's a book that has like reflection questions and things like that. If you aren't Christian, a devotional book usually has you like doing some level of refre reflection and possibly like studying the Bible. I don't think this one has like direct Bible sort of stuff tied into it but each chapter like the questions feel a little bit like you're doing therapy like she wants you to journal certain things and things like that so this is not a book that you just like read straight through so i'll probably be doing a chapter a day or a chapter every couple of days and so i imagine that i will get through this by the end of the month as long as i keep doing that and so that means i just have to read that one book these two comics and then all i will have left is anna Karenina and the Anna Karenina retelling. And so this is going to be my project in December. However, I also checked out from the library because I was on hold for it. And of course it came in now. The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. So I probably am gonna work on this first because it's due back at the library in like a week or two. And you know, everyone's on hold for this book because it's super popular. And I've heard nothing but amazing things about this. So I've been like waiting to read this book. So I'm probably gonna read this. I already started it and got about 30 pages in and was like, yeah, I'm in love with this writing at least so far. So this is going to be a thing. But then also <laughs> this is gonna be a thing. So this is gonna be an interesting month. We're gonna wrap 2021 up in a really interesting way and I'm kind of excited about that so you know stay tuned it's also the end of the year which means I want to be making all of these videos so there might be more videos for me than you're used to as of late I have at least enough ideas to do like one video a week there's a potential I could do more I'm not going to do full vlogmas because I don't have time for that but there might be just a couple of additional videos in your sub boxes this month for me so keep an eye out i'm very excited for december in terms of my reading potential i feel like now that it's getting colder outside i'm reading a little bit more i feel like my schedule is working out where i have a little bit more time to read or i'm making more time to read and things like that and yeah i have some like i feel like potentially great books to read in the month of december and then i'm gonna you know figure out what I want to do in 2022 I already have a couple of ideas just gotta like you know sit on them a little bit 
workshop them a little bit and I'm really excited to like talk about all this stuff for you so yeah I feel like lately I've been really excited to read really excited to be making videos again not again but like I don't know getting back into the groove of things a little bit more and so hopefully you guys are excited too but yeah that's everything that I have feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any comments about any of the books that I mentioned here because there was a whole lot going on in this video or if you have any general questions or comments you're welcome to leave that down in the comment section as well so yeah that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Thank you.